this gonna work? Is this gonna work? It might work. The guy watching me through my window. Sitting outside of Starbucks on uh, 75th and Rickard in uh, Naperville, Illinois. Uh, 75th Street's a pretty big street that rolls through uh, kind of the south edge of town a little bit. And uh, so there's going to be some car noise. I wanted to go live in, inside the Starbucks, but uh, maybe I'm going to change angles. Maybe I'm going to change over to here. How about over here? This might be more fun. This might be more fun. Oh, yeah, that's a lot more fun. That is a lot more fun. I think it's more fun. Chair's a little wet. We got some rain last night. My table is certainly lopsided, but we'll just roll with it as best we can. Because that is what we do in life. That is the lessons we learn. How is that? Is that okay? Guess it's going to have to be okay. We're going to try our best. Hello, Ilzum. Hello, Trailblazer. Hello, Milan. Mickey. Josh. MDG. Truly. Kathy in the California, in the CA. Uh, good morning, Josh. Sea Dog. Bullets raining. Uh, I'm going to drink a little water while my massive crowds tune in. Oh, that's good. Oh. That is good. Uh, do I want to link up today for some hot wings? No, not really, truly, truly. I don't really even care for wings that much. It's a very specific request on your part, though. You must have woken up this morning saying, I want to eat some hot wings. My struggle with wings... We got some decent wings places. Oh, we got three uh, older gentlemen. When I say older, I'm 56. I mean, I'd say they're probably mid 60s, and one guy's probably early 70s. I don't know what my point is. I was wondering if I could join their group. I'm wondering if I could join their group. Truly has a new restaurant opening that is looking for people to sample their wings. Yeah, nah, I don't care that much about wings. Uh, easy Pictures Draw asks the same question every day. And it's not even a funny question. And I've answered it. <laughs> Am I mad at God for taking my hair? I, I can only answer that so many times. I cut all these lives into shorts and reels and TikToks. And Every once in a while, somebody will ask a good question that a uh, uh, becomes a good uh, video for me to clip later, like I'm a month behind in my editing. But if you keep hopping on asking the same question every day, A, it's not funny, B, it's never going to make a good short reel or uh, clip. So, uh, yeah. So... Uh, Jules is going to the Naperville settlement today. Well, it's nice and warm out today. It's It almost feels like it's a spring day in, uh, or an early, late winter day in South Carolina where I'm going to be playing golf with my uh, friends and family and we're on a golf trip. feels like that kind of weather because there's a lot of humidity in the, in the uh, air. Good morning, Sandra Lynn. And good morning, good morning, good morning to you. My name is Ken Tracy, and this is Coffee with Ken. It is Tuesday morning.
a year or two ago, I sang happy birthday. Well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to have to do it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Captain Kenny. Happy birthday to you. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. It's Captain Kenny's 64th birthday today, November 19th. About two years ago, and when I say about two years ago, it must have been exactly two years ago. He was a newer viewer to my show, and he hopped on and said, Hey, it's my birthday. I was living <laughs> in what home at that time? It was like three or four homes ago, and it's only been two years. Oh, yeah, I've had a crazy uh, <laughs> couple years. But either way, and uh, I think I had a candle, and I think I lit the candle, and I sang happy birthday to him, and I blew it out. And that started about a six-month run of me uh, singing happy birthday to any viewers whose birthday it was. And it was fun for a while. Maybe it played its way out. Maybe I had some trolls hopping on and making up that it was their twins' birthday and having me sing to their twins and doing it with such authenticity uh, that they actually felt guilty because they didn't even have twins. So it certainly wasn't their twins' birthday. But either way, it was a custom I stopped. But I'm glad to bring it back out for you. Yeah, I'm glad I brought it back out for you, Captain Kenny. Yeah, Not Original's been watching a while. Sometimes Not Original and I but. Uh, bump heads. I think we're both strong personality people. And uh, yeah. So sometimes she and I butt heads, but we manage to peacefully coexist and happily coexist. Well, not original. You gotta know you say things sometimes that ruffle my feathers. Like the other day you said you went for a dog walk and uh, you missed the uh, beginning of my show. What did you miss? And I told the audience that you can't say, hey, what did I miss? And expect a full recap. To which you responded, I was just asking. You don't have to answer. So that's the only type of button heads I'm talking about. Captain Kenny certainly is 64 today. Uh, show me, show us your feet. No, I don't think I'm going to show you my feet. I don't think I'm going to show you my feet today. I could show you my shoes. Uh, what's my favorite childhood memory? I think you may have asked that yesterday. I think you may have asked that yesterday. We're going to have to get some new question answers. Because, again, I post all of these live videos. I have a lot of fun doing this show. And I post them all uh, to various social media platforms. And I clip them into... Uh, uh, shorts and reels and TikToks and grow my audience a little bit uh, every day and uh, enjoy it. And I think I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Actually, I know I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Uh, yeah. 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 Somebody asked, how was my last uh, interview? And uh, it's funny, I just posted a video. Uh, I just posted a video about uh, a last interview. And again, I'm a month behind in editing these videos. So the video I just posted about uh, somebody had asked how my interview was. And I was extremely positive. And I was saying how great the interview was. But I didn't think it was the right job for me. And I thought that was important because I think, I don't know, I think, well, I don't, I, I think I think differently than the rest of society. And when I'm going in to a job interview, I don't look at it as me trying to sell myself into a job necessarily. It's me asking questions and the interviewer asking questions and trying to solve a problem. The problem, we both have a problem 
they are short staffed and need to hire somebody. And I have a problem that I may be looking for employment or looking for another opportunity. And about a month back, I interviewed uh, with a RV sales company here in town. And the interview went great and I enjoyed it. And we asked big, deep questions uh, and tried to determine the uh, regional manager and I if the position would be a good fit for me and I would be a good fit for the position. And after a long discussion, I think uh, since that job at that time, it was a sales job and it, they were offering a draw and a commission, but it was a sales job that's sort of seasonal and probably it would be hard to knock the cover off the ball going into November and December. And the draw they were offering was, wasn't was going to cover my financial uh, responsibilities at that time. And we were trying to make it work. And I actually suggested, in lieu of one of my draw payments, that they give me uh, an RV to live in. I thought it was a pretty good solution. And he goes, well, that's probably not going to happen. But when somebody says it's probably not going to happen to me, it means it might happen. So I kind of kept it in my back pocket and looked at it as an option for a while. Uh, But after we probed and asked the right questions, I don't think uh, it was the right position for me or I was the right salesman for them. I think I was uniquely qualified to do that job. I think if it's possible to knock the cover out of the park selling RVs in Naperville, I would be the man to do it. But honestly, I think what they are looking for isn't somebody uh, to knock the cover off the ball. They're looking for somebody to fill a desk and help people as they come in and take, you know, I don't know. I don't want to diss them because I really respect the guy, but they have salespeople that they have working there that are doing the job apparently fairly okay. But I didn't want to do the job fairly okay. I wanted to knock the cover off the ball. And as he and I discussed, I don't think they were looking for that. And uh, they weren't going to reinvent the wheel for me, and I don't blame them. Uh, I don't blame them. Somebody said, why wouldn't they want to sell a lot of RVs? Uh, Okay, well, because they had a business model that works fairly well, where they do most of the marketing and customers stroll in every now and again to get their RV serviced or maybe to upgrade or buy a different one or whatever. Kick the tires. And when somebody strolls in, one of the salesmen gets up from their desk and goes and says, hello, how are you doing? And says whatever it is they say and shows them a couple RVs and tries to pique their curiosity and solve their issues or find out what they're looking for. And near the closing phase, they call in the general manager, the sales manager who helps close the deal. (laughs) To me, uh, that seemed a little uh, passive. (laughs) To me, and I I was in the building about three times, And I don't, maybe one out of three of the times I was there, uh, there was an actual customer in the building or on the lot. And for me, I mean, the first thing I thought of is, wow, this place needs more customers. How would I get more customers? It was on a very busy road in Naperville. (laughs) My first thought was, Wait, doing jumping jacks out front saying, come on in, come on in. We're giving away free coffee. Come on in or something. Maybe wearing an RV costume and doing moving up and down or doing something or posting online or driving traffic to that uh, RV dealership. Because if my job was to take care of the customers that came in through the door, 
I didn't see a whole lot of opportunity in my job. Uh, Because honestly, there weren't enough customers coming through the door. And my first issue with this dealership is they need more traffic. Uh, They need more traffic. Yeah. And whether it was me doing jumping jacks, wearing the RV costume, or offering free coffee, or posting pictures or videos online, or whatever other idea I could come up with... uh, Whatever other idea I could come up with, my goal immediately was to get more human beings walking through their dealership. Because one thing I've learned uh, in my career in sales is we're usually selling to human beings. And if we don't have people to sell to, we're probably not going to sell a lot. So I'm talking about all these ideas and taking over their internet and taking over their whole sales department and, you know. And he was offering the draw he was offering. And at that time, because my expenses were up here, by the way, I've cut my expenses in half and it feels so good. Uh, Yeah, it feels so good. But anyway, my expenses were up here. I couldn't take the job. Because I'm going, hey, with that draw, although I do appreciate it, it won't cover my rent and uh, my child support payments and my phone bill and my food bills and every other bill I have. And he didn't want to, he wasn't able uh, to find a creative way to get me there. Or maybe didn't want me, maybe didn't like me, maybe didn't think I'd be a good fit. Uh, Any of those... uh, Reasons, But either way, my point was the interview went fantastic. I met with a guy I respected who I believe respected me. We probed opportunities and we probed my skill sets. And despite my big ideas and my thoughts and my ways for reinventing the wheel... Uh, He didn't have it in his budget or in his desire to reinvent the wheel with me. And, you know, I don't blame him. They've got a business model that's sort of working. Uh, It's probably not the way I would do it. I mean, I know it's not the way I would do it. I'd I'd be assigned, hey, free coffee in the RV dealer. Come on in. Shooting videos, posting online, putting a huge sticker of the dealership on my RV that they give me in lieu of draw and have me driving out around Naperville and having coffee and singing the praises of RV life to people in Naperville. And that's not what they were looking for. They wanted somebody to be sitting at a desk in their dealership. And that wouldn't have been, in my thoughts, the best way to sell an RV. And I would have felt frustrated and maybe lonely and not living up to my potential. Because if you want to hire me to work for your company, you better not tell me to sit at a desk. Because that's not what I should be doing. I'm meant to be out in public. I meant to be out in public, making people laugh and smile. (laughs) I don't know if I should tell this. I don't know if I should tell this. I'll just tell it because what the heck? What's going to happen to me? Uh, I had a daughter turn 18 uh, recently. And because of that, uh, my ex-wife and I needed to go in uh, to court yesterday. And... uh, uh, adjust the child support payments and uh, I don't know I was being me I was being me and uh, my ex-wife and I were getting along as well as a couple that's divorced and is at court that's discussing child support payments could get along Uh, but I was being me and the judge knows how much I make and knows my expenses and knows how much my ex-wife makes and knows our expenses and knows a fair bit 
And I bragged to her that uh, I'd cut my expenses in half and my income had gone up. And she smiled and kind of laughed. And I could tell was kind of curious. Could tell I was kind of curious or she was kind of curious. And there's, there's like a bailiff over there. And it was a quiet day in court and the bailiff leaned in. And I looked at the judge and the bailiff and I go, you want to know how? And they both laughed and said, yeah. (laughs) And they loved my story. They loved my story. They loved my, okay, we all want to know. I said, Judge, I was living in an extended stay, paying sixteen, seventeen hundred bucks a month. And honestly, it was hard for me to cover my all my expenses at the job I have and pay seventeen hundred bucks a month. So what I did is I bought a Kia Soul last week and I moved into it. I moved all my stuff into it. And put all my stuff and got a uh, 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 (laughs) warm sleeping bag and bottles of water and uh, moved out of the (laughs) extended stay. Joined a gym. Joined a gym. A really nice gym in town. So don't worry. I won't smell, Judge. I'm going to be able to shower and shave and get clean and go forward in life. But I was able to cut my expenses in half. By cutting my cost of living in half in the last two weeks. And I can't tell you how good that feels. Because I was working, when I first came back to Naperville, I was working six days a week as a waiter at this restaurant that I work at. And the restaurant has cut back on some shifts and hired some new employees, so was no longer able to work six days a week and cover uh, the cost of rent and covering my child uh, support. And it felt like I was kind of doing my best to tread water, uh, but I was drowning a little bit and it was hard to keep my head above water. And I didn't like that feeling. I didn't like that feeling. I didn't like that feeling. Ah! A light just went off. I said, would it be better if I went this way? Nah, it's fine this way, right? Uh, my light just went off. That's no fun. And, uh, uh, but able, either way, was able to cut my expenses in half two months ago. And again, I edit these videos and I'm about two months behind. Uh, two months ago, I was editing these videos. And at the time I said, I wanted to focus on revenue and I was going to focus on revenue. And I did. And I was picking up shifts, and I was growing uh, coffee with Ken, and I was donating plasma, and my revenue was doing pretty well, but it wasn't growing quick enough to cover all my expenses. It wasn't growing quick enough to cover all my expenses. And what I realized in the last week is it's really hard to focus on revenue If you are drowning in your expenses, if you are drowning in your expenses. So in two fell swoops, I was able to cut my expenses in half and suddenly feel like I'm prosperous. (laughs) And I will tell you what, I often say money doesn't buy happiness. Uh, but prosperous feels pretty good. And over the last several years, outside of my stint when I was working in Yellowstone, because I am twice divorced, I do have four beautiful kids, and um, I do have four beautiful kids. And outside of my stint living in Yellowstone, Uh, I was struggling. I was struggling. I just switched careers two years ago, and I was fortunate that I switched. I was fortunate that I switched. I was a realtor for 17 years and did fairly okay. 
But even when I was doing fairly okay, I felt like I was just struggling to keep my chin above water. Uh, and I'll tell you what, struggling to keep your chin above water uh, sucks. Sucks. It's okay to do a while, but it's not a good lifestyle. It's not a good lifestyle. Day Trader asked, I don't know why living below my means is some type of philosophical lesson. Well, it isn't necessarily. You take you take uh, what you get what you want to get from anything I'm saying. I'm not saying you gotta do what I'm doing. <clears throat> I'm not saying what I'm gonna do. Uh, you should do what I'm doing. I'm saying I'm doing what I got to do to get me where I want to go. To get me where I want to go. And I'll tell you what. In the last week, I have saved $400. Holy crap. It's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. I'll tell you what. It's a good feeling. It, I tell you what, somebody said, oh, it won't be fun uh, in a few weeks when it gets really cold. Well, I can make adjustments at that time. Uh, I can make adjustments at that time. You could buy a heater. You could buy a, I could save up enough money to move back in a house. You could buy a nice warm sleeping bag. There's all sorts of things I can do. Uh, but yeah, one step at a time. Lisa Smith said, did I get the result I was looking for, seeking from the judge? Uh, yeah, I got clarification. I wanted to know what I was supposed to, what the child support payments were supposed to be. I'd had a daughter turned 18. They were supposed to change. I think both my ex-wife and I are pleased. Uh, I think both my uh, ex-wife and I are pleased. So, yeah, Lisa, it was perfect. Uh, yeah, it needed to be changed. It needed to be changed, and it was changed. Uh, so it feels good. And now I know what I'm supposed to be paying. And now I know I can. And it feels good. So cheers to that. And what's interesting, and I was thinking about it, over the last few days, uh, I was thinking about it, and see, Carolina said, lots of homeless people in Florida, you can come down here. I don't feel I'm homeless. I don't even feel I'm slightly homeless. True, <laughs> I don't own or rent a home. But I don't feel homeless. I think homeless might be a state of mind. And what they tell you, I've been broke a bunch of times in my life. I've been rich a bunch of times in my life. But I've never been poor. Because poor is a state of mind. While being broke is a situation that you're in that you can work your way out of. And, uh, yeah. 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 So I'm just doing what I got to do. It could change next week. I tell you what, the revenue continues to grow on social media. I'm still making money at the restaurant, still enjoying uh life. Still seeing my kids getting in great shape. <laughs> I might be unhoused right now. I might be unhoused right now, but unhoused even seems like something that happened to me as if I'm a victim. And I don't feel like I'm a victim at all. I feel like I'm a guy playing Monopoly who has had a few bad roles in a, in a row but who's going to make a comeback and who is making a comeback uh, right in front of your eyes. It's a glorious comeback. Yeah. 
sure we choose our own path and sure sometimes there's bumps along the road I chose my path to be a realtor and did that a long long time I chose to get married twice and have four beautiful kids and have uh, more expenses that can would choke many people uh, I chose to keep moving forward and keep fighting and going to church on Sunday and joining a gym and working out and loving on my kids and doing my show and drinking my coffee and waking in gratitude every morning, even when it's hard and smiling a lot more than I cry. And I'll tell you what, life's good because I think I am exactly where I am supposed to be. And where I am is not where I'm going, uh, but it's where I'm supposed to be. And I'll tell you what, it feels pretty good to have my expenses under control, uh, <laughs> to have cut down on my stuff. And uh, be going in the right direction. Uh Well, thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Alexandra Hope, for the roses. I so appreciate that. By the way, somebody asked, somebody said something about how it won't be fun in a few weeks when it gets really cold. I tell you what, it is kind of fun. It feels like I'm camping. I mean, it's not a long-term solution, but it feels like I'm camping. I went shopping for uh, super warm sleeping bags last night. They didn't have... Uh, cold weather enough sleeping bags at the store I was at but I it's it's interesting that they have them it's interesting that there's people living full time in Kia Souls uh, and you can look them up on YouTube you can look them up on YouTube and I've said it before I think they might be a little crazy and they may be living in warmer climates or travel in the country but it's not that bad it's not that bad I and mean, I got a great night's sleep last night. I got a great night's sleep last night. And I saved 60 bucks. Feels like a no-brainer. I'm going to go to my gym, get a great workout in today. I might even do a yoga class. There's a yoga class at 1.30. It'll be over at about 2.30 which will allow me to shower when I'm done and then go down and pick up my two beautiful babies today. And I'll tell you what, it feels great. And another thing, I was talking to my brother on the phone yesterday. When you have a certain amount of expenses, you can't, you can't accept every job that's thrown at your feet. Because if you're working at a job that doesn't cover your expenses, you're going to be in a lot of trouble pretty quick. And for instance, I was talking about this RV sales job at the beginning of my show that I had to say no to because they were going to pay me $910 every two weeks. Uh, but I wasn't going to be able to wait tables while doing the job. And I was going to be making less money than I do waiting tables for the first couple months so I wasn't even able to say yes to this job even though I might have been uniquely qualified because it wouldn't have covered my expenses so now I can say yes to anything because my expenses are cut and uh, yeah and it feels good to be able to say yes and to be able to join a slightly nicer gym than I was uh, a member at before that was Planet Fitness. And a gym that feels more like a club and has families coming in and taking their kids to the daycare and all sorts of people working out and yoga classes and uh, uh, to have a lot of opportunities in front of me. Yeah, David. I wonder if they let visitors into my gym. 
David, if I brought you into my gym, none of the ladies in the gym would even give me a second look. They'd look at your handsome face and your beautiful flowing hair. <laughs> I wouldn't stand a chance. I wouldn't stand a chance. <laughs> so I can't do that, especially not my first day uh, at yoga class. Somebody said women are problems. I doubt that's true. I think relationships are hard. And if you aren't, if, if I or you aren't in a good place spiritually, financially, mentally, for whatever reason, and we try and form a relationship and we expect that other person to complete us, uh, that relationship is doomed for failure. And I think throughout my entire life, I got into relationships hoping the woman I was with would complete me in some way or fulfill me in some way or make me whole. And I needed to become whole on my own or through spirituality uh, before I could bring the best version of... Uh, Myself. Oh, that is good. That is a nice cup of coffee. Hey, there it is. There's my Kia Soul. I think Kia's eventually going to hire me right there. Right there. I bought it white. I bought it white. Did I tell you? Well, I did a video about it yesterday that I had a nail in the front right tire. And I took it in to get it fixed and was so impressed with the uh, uh, company that uh, uh, plugged my tire for me for free. Uh, it actually felt real good because it was a new car. And you don't want new cars having issues. And I'd been driving it the previous day or so and felt it was pulling a little bit to the right. And uh, it was good that it was a fixable issue versus low quality manufacturing that caused the alignment to be screwed up in the first week. So I took it in, got the nail removed, the tire plugged, and the car's running like a dream again. Uh, the car's running like a dream again. Tonya, Tonya, you have a wonderful day. Uh, D Blaze, I posted a video about who had, who did it for free. And I posted it all over social media. And I think I'd probably make a pretty good corporate sponsor because uh, I think I'd make a pretty good corporate sponsor. And again, I talk a lot about Starbucks. I talked a lot about Discount Tire. I talk a lot about my Kia. Uh, all of those companies, you know, somebody in them somewhere along the line is seeing my videos and going, hey, this is a little free advertisement. I wonder what this guy would do, would need to do it full time. And I'll tell you what, if Kia wants to hire me as the spokesman for Kia and run commercials with me, uh driving around, having a great time, waving at other Kia owners or beeping my horn or sleeping in the, like a baby, sleeping in a baby or doing whatever sort of thing they want to do. I would love to do it because I think I have a fun time uh, on video and talking to the camera. And I think I may seem to be a pretty... Uh, a face and a voice that connects well with an audience and I uh, uh, wouldn't be surprised to see that happen at some point they usually use celebrities like Matthew McConaughey for Lincoln I mean that's yes Matthew McConaughey is a celebrity and he does work 
uh, for Lincoln and do commercials, but that's not really entirely true. I mean, there's a lot of people that you don't know that, you know, that you've never seen. What's the guy? Uh, Jake from State Farm. I'd never seen that dude before. As a matter of fact, he wasn't even the original Jake from State Farm. <laughs> uh, but they hired a new guy to be Jake from State Farm. And I, he was some of the guy I was familiar with. But now he's hanging with uh, football players and continuing to do Jake from State Farm. I think I am manifesting. But I don't know. If, I think I've always thought manifesting was sitting there and going, hey goodness is coming to me and wealth is coming to me and prosperity and happiness and joy. But I don't know if that's truly what manifesting is. I don't think manifesting is passive. I think it's envisioning something and dreaming about something and seeing something and going for it. And I think that's what I'm doing. And I've got a vision, and I've got a faith, and I've got the God-given abilities to do whatever I want in life, and now I'm just going for it. And Coffee with Ken is part of that, and you are uh, just kind of hopping along on my little adventure that is going for it, and it is light. And uh, part of it is waiting tables. And part of it might be sleeping in a Kia for a period of time. And part of it might be, I don't know, delivering packages seasonally for UPS if I feel I, it's an opportunity or I, a need. Or part of it might be selling RVs. Or part of it might be, I don't know going to the gym and working out and doing yoga class and meeting somebody there that goes, hey, I want you working for me. Or, and I'll say, no, I want you working for me. Because <laughs> I think I'm a better boss than I am an employee. Uh, so yeah, maybe I'll find somebody at yoga class today that uh, is uniquely qualified to help me take coffee with Ken to the next level or do something. Uh, but either way, it, uh, feels really good. Feels really good. Robert Patrick feels similar, minus a thriving TikTok show. Well, I'll tell you what, a thriving TikTok show is not for everybody. You know, we're not all meant to do this. We're not all meant to do this. Uh, But you could try it. You could try it. But don't try and do my show. Uh, Don't try and do my show. Am I a tall guy? Uh, I'm six foot two. Users saying, I want to meet someone at the gym to hire them. Do I want to? I mean, I'll keep my eyes open. I'm always looking for opportunities. I am the CEO of Coffee with Ken. Kelly Burris is saying you have to do battles on here. That's how you make money. I don't believe it, Kelly. Because I do make money on here. I do make money on here, and I don't even know what a battle is. I don't want to do a battle. I don't even like the term. I don't even like the term. You know, I don't even know what that means. Uh, But I do make money on here. And it grows a little bit every day. And I pick up subscribers every day. And my viewership follows on all social media or grows on all social media platforms. And I will tell you what. uh, I'm going to get in. I mean, I'm in good shape. I'm in good shape. But for the last month since I left Planet Fitness, uh, 
I felt I was regressing and getting in less good shape. And I've worked out the last three days, and I'm going to go to a restorative yoga class today. And I'll tell you what, yeah, restorative yoga is <clears throat> feels so good. It's easy and slow and warm and gentle. And I'll tell you what, I'm sore. <laughs> and I have aches and pains in my body. And I can use a little restorative yoga today. And I'm so excited about it. Uh, Marge, you're right. The sky is the limit. And the sky's not just the limit for me. The sky's the limit for you as, all, as well. Because we are all uh, blessed. And uh, uh, we're all blessed in certain ways. And uh, we all have opportunities in front of us. And we all just got to open our eyes a little bit. Uh, yeah, and keep our eyes open. So it's Tuesday morning. I'm excited about my day. I'm going to go sit on that soft chair there. going to get... Eh, I don't even need a refill yet on my coffee. And... Uh... uh Please do you a clip of the birthday song so that I could show Joanne TikTok video. Uh, I uh, might get to that today, Captain Kenny. Uh, and I love you and I want to do that. But suddenly <laughs> my mind is cluttered. I felt I had such a clear path in front of me. Refill coffee, soft chair, post video, edit videos. I don't know. I'll probably send you one somehow, some way. Uh, but anyway, I so appreciate you guys for hopping on today. And anybody new, please follow my page and subscribe to my channel and uh, like my videos or don't like my videos or do whatever it is you will. Uh, but I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I hope uh, you had a great start to your week yesterday. And... Uh, you're enjoying your coffee. That uh, you are feeling good. That you are loving yourself. That you're forgiving yourself. And as always, I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.